Well, it's that time of the year again. We're all cozy with our hot chocolate and soft blankets. Ready to relax after a hard day of- Wait, what's that? The new Spinosaurus paper came out. Everyone's going nuts over it? The entire paleontology community is changing right before our very eyes? <sighs> yeah, it happens every year, so what? For those of you who don't know, Spinosaurus is pretty much the prehistoric version of a platypus. It's God's beautifully blended smoothie as some of the weirdest animals ever, and it seemingly gets weirder every single time someone talks about it. Its history alone is enough to make anyone go insane, so let's start slow. In 1911, in the hot, sandy, Bahari oasis of the western desert of Egypt, bones of a prehistoric chimera would soon be discovered. Their finder, Ernst Strummer, was a German paleontologist with a passion for the prehistoric. It wasn't until the next few years that he would realize just what kind of creature he had found. The partial skeleton was quite strange for a dinosaur. A thin lower jaw, crocodile-like teeth, and above all, a giant back vertebra that sported spines up to six feet tall. Strummer attributed them to a dinosaur like the popular T-Rex, but with a sail on its back, a much different reconstruction than what we see now. Sadly, these bones would soon be buried along with Strummer in the Second World War. The tale of Strummer's missing dinosaur found its way into educational resources, becoming a part of paleontology legend. The mystery of this animal was seemingly at a close. It wasn't until much later, when Jurassic Park 3 released in 2001, that Spinosaurus finally saw the light of day again. Suddenly, everyone couldn't stop talking about this extraordinary creature. It took a T-Rex, the most famous dinosaur of all, and beat the ever-living crap out of it like they were in an MMA fight. Granted, it would have gotten absolutely slaughtered by a T-Rex in reality, but nonetheless it allowed Spinosaurus to slowly become a household name. This version of Spinosaurus, with its new crocodilian snout and giant powerful presence, became the face of the dinosaur for about a decade. Some paleo artists and documentaries showed slightly different variants of Spinosaurus, but the truth was that there just wasn't enough data to work with. However, in 2011, Nazar Ibrahim, a doctoral student at University College Dublin, was set to give his PhD thesis on dinosaur and other vertebrate findings from the Kem Kem beds of southeastern Morocco, a place that held fossils very similar to those in the Bahari Oasis. Lo and behold, one of the dinosaurs he wished to talk about was, in fact, Spinosaurus. Ibrahim and his team discovered not just isolated bones of Spinosaurus in Morocco, but parts of what might be a completely new skeleton. This was a big deal. This would mean that these bones would be the first skeleton since Stromer, and could completely change what we know about this incredible animal. Fast forward to 2014, and Abraham and his team published a new paper on Spinosaurus, describing their findings. Among these are bones from the skull, backbone, forelimb, pelvis, and hind limb. From these remains, Spinosaurus changed from an apex predator to something truly unusual. These strange fossils led Abraham to conclude that Spinosaurus was most likely semi-aquatic, given its design for eating fish and potential webbed feet. This meant that Spinosaurus would fit in a weird niche between a crocodile and a large predatory dinosaur. Other pieces of evidence have been found before that other closely related dinosaurs might have also been semi-aquatic, but this was the most convincing case that they spent a significant amount of their lives near or in lakes and rivers. Adding on to this, it was proposed that Spinosaurus was also quadrupedal, walking on both hind legs and front limbs only adding more onto the ugly duckling that Spinosaurus was quickly becoming. After this paper was published, Abraham and his team were hit with quite a bit of backlash from other paleontologists. This is usually how paleontology works though. Scientists propose ideas or hypotheses, and then test them by looking at the existing evidence or bringing new evidence to light. If a hypothesis holds strong, then it gradually gets incorporated into the body of knowledge. Five years later, and Abraham was ready to bite back. You see, after 2014, even more Spinosaurus fossils were discovered. This time, they were of the tail. This discovery had many of us paleo nerds scrambling to pick up our jaws off the floor, just because of how absolutely weird it was. Spinosaurus's tail was nothing like any other carnivorous dinosaur known, with an almost fin-like structure due to its elongated vertebra, making it look like a giant salamander. This discovery was like a smack in the face to those who argued that Spinosaurus wasn't semi aquatic beforehand but this wouldn't be the last we'd hear from Spinosaurus's way of water. Not by a long shot. In just a few years, early 2022 to be exact, yet another scientific study was done, this time by the University of Portsmouth. This wasn't just on Spinosaurus either, but on a few members of the Spinosaur group, to test whether their bones would have held up well in water. 
This study was conducted on Spinosaurus, Sycamarmus, and Baryonyx. What this study concluded was that Spinosaurus and Baryonyx are much denser compared to those of Sycamarmus, which was interpreted as being helpful for balance or ballast while swimming. Poor Sycamarmus was left on the short side of the pool. And if you thought that was it, just get ready for this. No longer than a few weeks before I wrote the script, yet another study was done on Spinosaurus. This study was led by paleontologist and professor Paul Serino, arguing against the idea that Spinosaurus hunted in water. The difference between this study and the others before it was that this time they had a fresh model of Spinosaurus, made from scans of its skeleton, and they also gave it musculature and body mass based on modern reptiles. Using this model, Serino concluded that Spinosaurus not only wasn't good at swimming, it was terrible at it. Many other predators besides Spinosaurus had dense limbs, even Tyrannosaurus, meaning that they were probably used to simply support its weight, because, when you know it, a 50 foot long dinosaur isn't exactly as odd as a feather. With such a huge body mass, large sail, and hind legs dangling behind, Spinosaurus would have actually been resistant to forces underwater, and way too rigid to power itself by tail and leg strength alone, even if they were webbed. The truth is, its tail simply wasn't powerful enough. In order to completely submerge itself, much less swim fast enough to catch anything, it would have needed up to 25 times the tail strength. Its sail would have also acted against it, since it would be quite awkward to try and ride itself if it were to flip over, unlike crocodilians which can easily roll around and spin to capture prey. So basically, Spinosaurus was only made weirder by this study, and will most likely keep getting weirder for years to come. Now it's sitting as a semi-aquatic ambush predator that fed mostly on fish. Its sail and odd tail structure were most likely used for display and sexual differentiation, meaning males were probably more colorful than females. And that concludes today's Spinosaurus history lesson and December's prehistoric annual of the month. I can only imagine how much weirder Spinosaurus could get from here, but if time taught us anything, it's that surprises are many and normalcy is thrown out the window. It's mind-boggling to think just how weird some other dinosaurs might become if we're able to find more fossils of them and I for one want to be there when we do. That's what makes dinosaurs so amazing. They're nothing like what we can see or touch today, and 2023 is only going to lead us more in our understanding of them. Thanks for watching, Happy New Year, and as always, keep your pencil sharp.